says the war between Israel and Hamas continues with no end in sight. Representatives of the Islamic Republic of Iran have begun to saber rattle in an attempt to get Arab republics on the side of destroying the Jewish state. During an international forum in Doha yesterday, Iran's foreign minister said that the only thing Iran and Israel share is that both do not believe in a two-state solution and that a referendum should be held to determine the fate of Palestine, with only descendants of those who lived there prior to 1948 being permitted to vote. Ron's involvement in the current conflict hasn't received very much scrutiny. For our next guest, editor-in-chief of The Foreign Desk, Lisa Deftari, it should. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you for having me. So how should we think about uh, Iran's current, what, what they've said about the conflict um, going on? It's not just currently. It's for 44 years. Ever since this regime came into power in Iran, its mission has been to destroy the Middle East and the global uh, community in terms of its instability, in terms of exporting terrorism, in terms of putting billions and billions of dollars annually into different terror proxies, including Hezbollah, Hamas, and the insurgencies in Syria, Iraq, and Yemen that we're seeing attacking U.S. assets. So when we're hearing more of this muscle flexing by Iran's regime, it only means one thing, that our foreign policy is weak and that they believe that they have the upper hand to continue making their threats, continue with their human rights abuses at home, continue with uh, attacking our assets in the region, uh, and of course, continue with their support of terror proxies that are, again, contributing majorly to the instability of not just the region, but the, the world as a whole. It seems like the visual images of the atrocities happening in Gaza, the 18,000 people uh, who have been killed in the last two months, the bulk of whom are women and children, the 10,000 estimated children that have been killed, the destruction of 80 percent of ha housing stock, et cetera, et cetera, and the critique from international, the international community has actually had a significant effect on the public perception of Israel and Palestine and the United States such that demographic groups that once disproportionately favored Israel in this conflict are flipping the other way. If you believe that Iran uh, are bad faith actors in all of this, what do you think should happen uh, in, in Gaza that would not enable them to continue to say, well, look, this is a real humanitarian crisis going on here. The reason we should all be on side is to stop the humanitarian crisis that Israel is inflicting upon Gaza, as opposed to the framing that you offered world domination, exporting terrorism, those kinds of things. Right. Great, great, great question. And I love the way that you set it up very well. Um, most people do not know all the nuances that you just referred to, but I will start with this. There are two wars currently going on. One is in the Middle East between Hamas and Israel. It is not the first time we have seen Hamas and Israel fight. When you see Hamas and Israel fighting, that's where I alluded to Iran being the funder and the person and the, the entity that trained these terrorists. So it's really a proxy war between Iran's regime and Israel. And that will remain in the Middle East. The other war that we're watching is the narrative war that is being pushed by the mainstream media, college uh, campuses. Uh, we're seeing social media obviously being a huge culprit in all of this in choosing sides based on these false narratives. You alluded to a death toll. There absolutely have been many innocent Palestinians killed. I'll be the first one to say that. We don't know the exact death toll because, again, it is coming from Hamas. It's coming from the Ministry of Health inside Gaza, which is run by Hamas. I will also point to the fact that many of these casualties are what we call collateral damage, meaning Israel, in, in its duty to defend itself and to eradicate Hamas, is going in and finding Hamas fighters, many times using their innocent, innocent civilians, babies, children as human shields, hiding them in hospitals, uh, creating situations where their, their own constituents, their own civilians are in harm's way, uh, not evacuating them in time, etc. Look, this is not pretty. It's war. Uh, and I think a lot of what is lost here is what happened on October 7th. I hear John Kirby really banging his head against the podium um, every other day when he has these press conferences, again, reminding reporters to start at the origin of all this, which is October 7th. Even if we want to go beyond that, this is a terror organization that is running or in charge of or the leadership of, of the Palestinian people inside Gaza. So when people talk about the disproportionality, let's start with the fact that we, we're fighting or, or the world is fighting a terror organization with Israel doing the dirty work. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very unfortunate that this has become so, you know, choosing sides. I mean, in Los Angeles here over the weekend, we had... Um, uh, pro-Palestinian protesters 
became very, very violent. They vandalized a church and many um, apartment buildings along the Wilshire Quarter near UCLA with graffiti. There were swastikas on four or five different buildings that I personally saw. I did a walkthrough early morning before they were able to cover up the graffiti. Now, it's a long stretch to, to connect a swastika with Bibi Netanyahu's policies in Israel. This has turned into open and unashamed anti-Semitism all over the world. And that's where we have to stop it. We have to correct the narrative here. And again, if people are really interested in the geopolitics of it, I remind you to go back and look at what Iran's regime is doing, where they're putting their money, how they're trading their own citizens, and ask an Iranian inside Iran who's been on the streets for the last year with the protests that uh, unfolded after the 22-year-old Masa Amini was killed for not wearing her headscarf properly. Ask those women who are taking to the streets how they feel about their government, how they feel about Israel, how they feel about the war going on right now. You'll get a more accurate answer out of one of them than you will from the influencers who are leading the discussion on social media. Uh, there's a lot there. Um, I, w I guess I can start by asking you, you said that this started on October 7th, but of course, uh, as many people point out, this is a conflict that's been going on for 75 years since the 1948 Nakba, during which 700,000 Palestinians were forcibly uh, removed from their homes in Israel, and for many of whom were forced into Gaza. The population in Gaza is largely, even before this crisis, an itinerant um, migratory population, refugee population. And of course, some of the most egregious early bombing campaigns that we saw in Gaza were those that were targeting or at least they hit, whether or not they were targeting, hit various refugee camps like Jabalia in, within Gaza, and then, um, along with UN targets and other hospitals, uh, churches, uh, mosques, universities, and other places that seem to have no uh, tactical or military relevance. Of course, we know that Israel has repeatedly claimed that Hamas is under every building an innocent person it has hit. But as we've just reported earlier this week on the show, uh, An Israeli analysis, uh, along with other international analysis, showed that Israel has been doing a worse job of avoiding civilians than any other conflict zone in the world in the last 20 years. The ratio of civilians that have been hit as compared to their own uh, articulated state of targets has been wildly askew. That being the case, and given that this is rooted back in 1948, and the fundamental concern that is being raised by people in Palestine and much of the Arab world is the ongoing uh, occupation of the people of Ga uh, Gaza and their inability Wait, to oh, have oh, their oh, own sorry, state. Sorry, I have to stop you right there, because there, there are a few things you well, said I, that I are— didn't, I didn't interrupt you, no, Ms. I know, Lisa. I just I, I, I make didn't sure interrupt that we're you. on the same page. Well, look, I, I, I let you say what you wanted to say. You characterized the protests in ways that I would not. They were protesting Joe Biden's visit to L.A. You made a lot of characterizations that I would personally um, uh, object to. But I just want to narrow it down, if I could, and ask you about what do you say to people who say this conflict did not, in fact, start on October 7th, that prior to October 7th, Israel had already killed hundreds of Palestinians. Um, the death toll of Israel killing Palestinians has always historically been higher than the other way around. And if, is the fighting ever going to stop? if the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine aren't allowed to have their own freedom? I, I mean, I, there's so much to uh, correct here. And I say correct because I, this is what I do for a living. It, in terms of its history, you're, you, you said so many things that are incorrect. In 1948, even prior to that, the Palestinians were offered a two, two states. They were offered their own state. And at that point, they would have a larger state than the state of Israel. Then if you want to move forward, the number of casualties, well, why are they massacring Jews, innocent civilians, and not expecting there to be a, a, a you know any sort of retaliation? The Biden protests that you're talking about, yes, it was in 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 uh, the the reaction to Biden coming to Los Angeles for a fundraiser. But were there not swastikas on buildings? Were there not was was a church not vandalized here in Los Angeles? I mean, when you talk about the disproportionality in numbers. This is, it's, you're framing it in a very dishonest way, and that's why I have to stop you. If we want to have some sort of dialogue about this, we have to start with facts. We can't just be throwing out emotional things like the Hamas says. Gaza was evacuated in 2005 and given to the Palestinians to have self-determination of Gaza. In 2007, they voted in, in an election, Hamas. Hamas is the official leadership 
of Gaza. So when they're not moving their constituents out of harm's way and that death toll goes up, and then you talk about why is there a disproportionate death toll, Israel does its best to remove people. And if you've seen the flyers, I've seen them, I've been there. Um, I've, I've actually seen how they get people out and they do, they, they actually go with the loudspeakers and the megaphones and they try to get them out, which absolutely goes against their military strategy, by the way. Uh, they allow people to move out and Hamas tells them not to. We saw the footage of Israeli tanks escorting uh, Gazans out of harm's way. We saw the United States go to bat to get American Palestinians out of Gaza when the, Ga when the, the Hamas would not let them out. I and mean, we have to talk about facts in order to, again, come up with a better solution going forward. If there should be a two-state solution, are we dealing with the Hamas that was, does not want to live side by side within Israel? It's actually in the Hamas charter to eliminate Jews, not just Israel. That's literally not true, Lisa. It hasn't been true for years. And so you're, you're telling me that I don't need to be emotional. I don't feel like that's what's happening here, Lisa. It sounds like you're, you just said a lot of things that were factually untrue. For one, I don't know if there were swastikas at that at that event, but I do know I that there was recently. What do you mean? It's 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 out there. It's not, let me, not my let me, opinion. Let me, let me ask. I have, wait, no, let me finish my thought. Like I, I I've let you. I don't think anyone could dispute that. I just let you speak until you naturally finish. Go ahead. Okay. You're absolutely right. But I Go do ahead. know that there was just yesterday or the day before yesterday a scandal where in San Francisco someone alleged that someone wrote "Free Gaza, Kill Jews, Allah Akbar" on a wall. The Muslim community was outraged because Allah Akbar, A-L-L-A-H, is not Arabic and is not the phrase that was trying to be get, gotten across. It was clearly a framing attempt from someone who's not even familiar enough with the language to, uh, to, to accurately even do a false flag. So with all of that going on, I would rather stick to the facts that we do know as opposed to what happened at a, at a given rally where the overwhelming majority of people were simply protesting what the international community has now characterized as an ongoing genocide. And, and I just would like you to answer the fundamental question here. You say that Gazans had self-determination and that they, Israel very politely evacuated Gaza so that they could live there. But of course, as you well know, they're not allowed to have an airport. They're not allowed to come and go. Israel controls their access to water and electricity and um, the internet. You know that they were put on a calorie restrictive diet so that the, they calculated how much people need to survive to be just above starving and allow that exact right. number of calories to come right. within Gaza. And that's the state that they were living under, under occupation um, up until October 7th and throughout. So the question is, do you expect that there will be an end to the fighting? Do you expect the Gazans to stop I resisting their occupation if they never are allowed to have genuine self-determination? Says this. I, I, listen, how many millions of dollars did this massacre on Israel cost Hamas? Why wasn't that money put into giving them more calories? Why, why are they spending all their money and resources on creating bombs instead and tunnels instead of using those pipes to get, give the Gazans clean water? I mean, I'm sorry, but you're framing these questions in a way that it's like, there's a lot of logic, but we're talking about a terror organization that does not care about the Gazans. And you're asking for the international community and Israel, the United States and the UN to care more for the Gazans than their own leadership does. Let's start with step one, calling out Hamas as a terror <laughs> yes. organization. Step two, calling out the, the massacre of October 7th as a terror attack. Step three, talking about Iran's regime responsibility and all this in funding Hamas and training those Hamas militants. Step four, I did an article in 2014 that got me put on the Hamas hit list where I talked about, where I interviewed dozens of Palestinians living in Gaza that said that they blame Hamas for the, 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 the trajectory of their lives and not Israel. These are realities. The Palestinian people are in fact victims. They're not victims of the international community and Israel. They're victims of their own leadership, whether it's the PA or Hamas. And that is what we have to talk about. The, the caloric diet, I mean, and look at this massacre that happened. If you what were about Israel, the caloric diet? Do you want to finish that thought? What about the caloric diet? What, do you want to finish that thought? What, how do you justify keeping a population near no starving? Listen, it, the Hamas needs to provide more for its citizens. It doesn't need to spend millions of dollars. How, how, on, on how, should, how should they do that? How, how should they do that? Look at all the humanitarian that? aid that went in. How much of there's that a, do you think went in? Ma'am, are you aware that there's a blockade on Gaza? Ma'am, are you worried? Are you aware that the, there's a blockade on Gaza? Gazans aren't even allowed to fish off the coast of their own land because of the Israeli it's blockade. Not true. This is absolutely listen. All this right. is absolutely not true. These, Lisa. these, this, it's not true. The, the, the 
listen to this, the checks that they have on Gaza is because of pure security. When they use an ambulance with a fake pregnant woman inside of it to conduct a suicide bombing on the border or come into Israel, this is why they need to have a checkpoint there. Does that not make sense? Does Israel not have to protect itself for things like October 7th not to happen over and over again the way Hamas has sworn it will happen over and over and over again? And to the international community that's calling for a ceasefire, we would all love to see this war end. But before before you call for a ceasefire, call for those hostages to be released. Call for Hamas to put down its weapons. Call for Iran's regime to stop supporting terror organizations. This is what we all want. We would love for there to be Palestinians and Jews living side by side in peace. All of the world, all of the countries in the Middle East living side by side in peace. But it has to start with rooting out terror organizations that use the people's money to conduct a jihad and not give them food, not give them water, not give them shelter. Lisa, here's a question I have. What if in the course of rooting out Hamas, as Israel is doing now, there are so many civilian casualties that we create more Hamas fighters in the future, relatives of the people who've died, who the, the Hamas becomes um, a more uh, esteemed organization because of all the death and destruction, and Israel actually makes its security problem worse? That's the, that's the fear I have. Sure, that's absolutely, I mean, look, what you're saying could be true, but what's the alternative for Israel to sit back and say, well, try again, or maybe, you know, and the fact that they're letting three terrorists out of prison for every one civilian hostage that they get back. That's those not are true. Like at at a certain point, to, it becomes it's absolutely true. I don't irresponsible. understand where you guys are getting your talking points from. This is absolutely true. I mean, Ma'am, the idea that back. every, every sta statement that is not um, uncritically supportive of Israel in every respect, including the ongoing genocide in Gaza, is a talking point or somehow um, being a mouth point for Hamas is, is a way to silence is a, is a way to silence the discourse around this really important issue. So, look, we appreciate you coming and speaking your piece on the show today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.